This is a video on how to use the temp sensor on the STM32. And so uh, it turns out that the, the temp sensor can be a little bit tricky to get working. Uh, just like, you know, the A to Ds um, in general on the STM32, they're not, um, you know, and I think this is largely because of the, <clears throat> the how. So this hardware abstraction layer, this piece of software, um, you know, until you can, can really kind of understand the, the uh, design philosophy behind what they're trying to do with the how, it, you know, some of the stuff they're doing can be um, a little bit um, uh, disconcerting. Could be, you know, you got to really kind of understand um, sort of how this links to the hardware and then what they're, they're doing with these functions that are used to, um, to, 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 to talk to the hardware. So um, we're going to do a polled conversion for the, for the um, temperature sensor. And in doing so, we're going to have to read something called the internal reference on the repent. And so this is a, a precision band gap reference that's actually calibrated at the factory, at STM, uh, at the, uh, wherever they manufacture this. As part of that process, they read the value of it at a particular, um, at a particular voltage and temperature, and then they, um, and then they write that calibration into, into flash, and you can go and read that out to get a more accurate version of that sensor. And so we're gonna use that, that calibration to, to uh, adjust our, our numbers to make it a little more accurate. So um, to, to, to kind of give you a sense of where this is all coming from, um, you know, what information, you know, where's this sort of mysterious, where are these mysterious incantations coming from uh, related to the, the um, related to the, the, the temperature sensor and the, the reference. Uh, uh, let me show you kind of the documentation stack that's, that's important here. Now, um, if you are, uh, you know, if you're in my embedded systems class this semester um, or, or in the future, um, you would go and look at my GitHub wiki uh, for, the, for the class. And that GitHub wiki um, has a, a references section. And in there, I link to all this documentation from ST. But let me go and show you some of the important pieces so you kind of have a sense of where, where I'm coming from with this. And so the first thing I would say is Carmine Novello, Noviello, I'm, I'm sure I'm making a mistake in how I pronounce his name. Um, uh, this, this person has written this Mastering STM32 book. It's a great introduction to how the, the how works and how, you know, how it connects to the hardware. Um, I would strongly encourage you to go and, and buy this book. Um, if, if you haven't already, it's, it's a great way to kind of get a top level view of a particular feature um, before you start diving into the much more detailed HAL documentation, which I'll show you in a second. But, you know, they, he's got a nice chapter on A to D. And so I would encourage you to go, like I said, get this book, um, gives you a good starting point, And then, we, you know, you can really, I think, get a context for diving into the documentation. Now... The, the software here, the, the information about the software is coming out of this, this you know, it's, what is it, about um, um, uh, 1,300 pages, I think is what this document is. Um, a document that is the, the user manual for the how. And so this is basically all the how functions, all those driver functions, um, gives you an idea of how they, they all go together. And so if you come down here to the ADC, um, you know, there's some sections in here, and, and so I think that what is um, probably the most important, you know, of course, you, you've got all of the different um, structs and the functions, but you also, it's got a little bit of a description about the API, and this how to use this driver section of this, it, it turns out to be important, and we'll refer back to this when we get going through this, because it'll show you, okay, what do you do when you want to do a polled ADC conversion? And so we'll, we'll follow this as a recipe when we get going. Now, we're not going to do an interrupt, uh, you know, a conversion by interruption or conversion by DMA. Those are certainly um, important things that, that I'm sure in certain applications um, would be, be relevant in the, in the first instance. So just trying to get this thing up and running. I wouldn't recommend going to interruption in, in DMA. If you can't get it work pulled, if you can't get it working pulled, the other the other versions are just going to add more complexity on top of that for good reason they they have they have a function 
um, they have reasons why you would definitely want to do this, um, you know, even sampling and um, you, you want very regular sampling, you're doing some sort of a filtering application, you know, you obviously don't, you don't want to burn up CPU time sitting there polling for some conversion to come back. So there's a lot of reasons why you might want to do it um, with interruption and, and or DMA. And so um, I'm going to leave that for, for a future video. All right. So in the, um, uh, the other thing you'll, you'll, you'll likely need to, to really get a grasp on this is the actual reference manual. This is the data sheet for the processor. And so um, you can go in and understand things like, well, what is the actual voltage of the reference, internal reference? And let's go, and I happen to know this is at, if we go to the electrical characteristics um, into, um, into here, we can look at um, the internal reference voltage here. And it's a, it's a, it's a, a band gap reference that is um, 1.2 volts, roughly, you know, in, in the sort of um, high 1.2. 1, 8 to 1. So basically it's a um, it's a precision reference that gives you some um, known voltage, right? Because remember, if you're, if you're building something with a battery, you don't know what the voltage is. I mean, you have to, you have to, you have, to have some you have to have some knowledge of voltage because remember your A to D converter is, you know, is only as good as its reference, right? Because it's basically taking that reference and Breaking it down into, you know, let's say in the 12 bits and the 4,096 um, um, steps, and it's giving you a value in that in that range. And so, um, if you know, if you don't, um, um, if you don't have a stable reference or you don't know what your reference is, all of a sudden that number is not very meaningful, right? Because it's it's all relative to what the reference is. So, you've got to have some stable reference in your system. A known reference so that then you can measure other things relative to that and so um, in our case we're going to use that internal reference to measure what the, uh, v, the v analog VDD is which is what we're actually using as our V reference plus for the converter which in our case because we're using the nucleo board is going to be a proxy for the battery voltage, we're going to call it. So that proxy for the battery voltage um, is is this um, you know is what we're going to try to understand. So so we write this command now. In the real light sensor application, which we're building in this embedded systems class, the battery voltage measurement's a little more um, involved because our system is actually uh, connected to a. A two volt reg we've got a two volt regulator that is uh, our analog reference and then what we're going to do is we're going to have to measure the battery voltage um, we're going to you know we're going to we're going to measure the battery voltage but that battery voltage is running through a resistor divider uh, that then has to be um, pa you know, we have to basically run it we have a we have a, uh, a switch on that resistor divider to keep it from drawing power all the time so for now, what we're going to do is we're going to use that, that internal reference to give us a proxy for, um, for actually uh, measuring um, our, our VREF plus, which will be a proxy for our battery voltage. So uh, just suffice to say, a reading VREF end is one thing that we're going to need. We'll make a temperature measurement, and then we'll also um, then we'll use some macros that are part of this library over here. All right. Um, the last thing I'll, I'll mention here is the, the reference manual. So each one of the processors for STM32, there's a, a reference manual like this. And that reference manual is basically the, the probably I would say the, mo the more detailed, the most detailed information you can get. And so the reference manual, you know, it'll have a whole section on the ADC. Um, here it is on the analog digital converter. And you can read all about it. It's, it's um, got some complexity to it. Um, and so, you know, you could take this documentation, you could say, look, I, I don't want to use the how at all. I don't like the how. I'm going to rewrite all these low level, um, low level drivers from scratch. No problem, you could do that. And that's been done. There was a real time operating system called ChibiOS, still, still exists, um, where they did that. They said, look, I'm really frustrated with the how. And all the sort of um, you know the early days of the HAL for STM32 were 
um, you know, it was a bit buggy. And so basically this, um, this, this person rewrote the entire, um, rewrote the entire how basically and built, you know, built this whole new driver infrastructure for Chibi OS from scratch. You can do that. The data sheet's perfectly, um, the information is all here, right? You can look at all the registers that are involved and that's basically all the how is doing. It is just talking to these registers and so you can go through and, and write your own your own system. It just requires. Um, uh, it's not. I guess it's not for the faint of heart for for maybe those of us who are a little bit um, older and have been doing this for a while with the embedded system stuff. That's how it used to be done. You used to write. You know, the the vendors did not provide software, so you would buy the chip. You'd have this register description. You would spend a lot of time developing drivers so that you could use these peripherals. And so um, I think that it's, it's a great thing that the vendors have stepped up into providing some of that middleware software that you need to kind of get things up and running. But there are also times where you may want to do something that's unique or interesting that, that the driver doesn't support or isn't, isn't um, easy to do inside the driver. You, you're, you can definitely go your own way here. All right. Okay, so for this first video, that's really all I wanted to say. I wanted to talk about where the documentation's at. So some of this stuff doesn't feel like it's coming out of outer space. It's not. It's coming from these references that I showed you. Um, um, and what we're going to do is we're going to set up to read a couple of channels on the uh, STM32. Again, I'm going to start from scratch here so that if you haven't been going through, say, the timer capture video series, you won't be lost if you're just starting on this one. But this gives you a way in, in a single project to kind of build this up for yourself. All right? And so, um, so more on this in the next video. Um, that's it for now. All right. Thanks.